Gurmagat and Um there's people watching uh, proceedings in this uh, doll this morning who quite frankly do not know how they are going to manage their week to week domestic budget because of the cuts that you are going to introduce. Now, you've accused others of having hard neck, but can I suggest that yours is a hard neck of the bright, brassy variety? Uh, a hard neck and a clear uh, belief that fair is in fact a four-letter word in the minds of Fine Gael and Labour. I don't know how you credibly say to the very people that you promised to protect, children, their mothers, their parents, carers, people with long-term sickness and disability. I don't know how you, how any of you will look them in the eye and utter the word fair. You're going to rush through social welfare legislation today that will introduce cuts that in real terms and in real time cause real hardship to real families, real children, and real women. And here's the real clangor. They're the very sections of society that you solemnly promised protection to. Well, so much for that. I don't know, Tanishta, if you had, if you deliberately set out to make liars of your TDs, of your ministers, of your senators, and to make a liar of yourself. But you have done that comprehensively. And so hard is your own neck, so brass iron is your own neck, that you will still stand up in this chamber and waffle on about fairness. I don't know how you do that. Can I suggest to the back benches, particularly of the Labour Party, perhaps the die isn't cast, because there will be amendments brought forward today to see off the worst excesses of these cuts, particularly in respect of the respite care grant and child benefit, the matter that you were so passionate and so right about not so long ago. Thank you, Deputy. Maybe the die isn't cast, and maybe despite your brass-necked leader, who has made liars of you, De Liars Deputy, of you Deputy, lads. Deputy McDonald. Maybe you will actually step up to the plate and maybe you will actually defend those people that you made solemn promises Thank to. Thank you, Deputy. Just, could I just say to Deputy McDonald that I would. Deputy McDonald, the word lie is not appropriate in any circumstances. So I just want to say that. Thing. I would, I would, I would, I would, oh, so I would, I would, I would ask you, Deputy, to withdraw that word. Please, please. I would ask you to withdraw that word. No, no, it's not. It's not it's the word. I just want to say, Deputy, that, that word, that word is not appropriate. You, the, word, the word lie is not appropriate in any circumstance. I make that point. So I, I would ask you to withdraw that word. I'm asking you. I'm just asking you to withdraw the word liar. Sorry, they're just diverting this conversation constantly, and I'm sick of it. I just, I just ask you, Deputy, to withdraw that word liar. I, I, I will not be withdrawing that word or any other word that I have used in this chamber today. A lie is a lie, and a liar is a liar, and the people at home viewing proceedings here know that full well. There are other words that can be used. Yes. Well, it, it, well, then let me withdraw the, the offensive term uh, lie mm. and say untruth, mm. porky pie, yeah. Pinocchio. Uh, thank you. Are they Tarnished allowable? Thank Are they allowable? Tarnished. It takes some brass neck for Sinn Féin to complain here about basic rates of social welfare. Is it true? Is it? Could it be true? Could it be true? Please. Could it be true that the basic rate of social welfare payment in the part of the island that Sinn Féin is in government in is 87 euros a week? Is that true? And you're here, and you're here, Sinn Féin, complaining because this government has protected the basic rates of social welfare in this country. Because we would not, we do not accept, we do not accept 
We, we do not, this government does not accept that somebody should be asked to live on less than 188 euros a week. And yet your party is content to have people living on 87 euros a week. That's brass neck. That's brass neck. This budget, this budget, this budget, which is a, this budget, which is a difficult budget, and a difficult budget in order to restore this country's uh, finances and to get us out of the economic mess that we inherited. This budget has protected basic rates of social welfare. It has protected children in the, in the classroom. There are no cuts in the basic education services. It is protecting our, our health services. It is introducing the biggest package of taxes on wealth that has been seen in a budget, certainly in my time uh, in this House, to raise over 500 million euro. And that is because, order, that is because the order. approach that this government is taking to, a, to what is a difficult budget is to protect those on low and middle incomes and to ask those with the broadest shoulders to bear the most. Deputy Mayor, you my tongue. Does order be so, Deputy Mitchell. So by that logic, uh, Tarnister, by that lo logic, in Planet Gilmore and Planet Labour in Fine Gael, the ones with the bro broadest shoulders then are children. Is that right? The ones with the broadest shoulders are carers that rely on a very meagre respite grant. Order. Is that the case? Now, you refer to the North, and it, I really wish that you do your homework properly when you investigate matters north uh, of the border. Because in comparing the system here in the north, you're comparing apples and oranges. There's lots of things that people pay for here that we don't pay for in the north. That's just a fact, lads. Just a fact. Deputies, please. Sorry. Sub Deputy. We could have order, please, for the person so, who's speaking. So today, Deputy the McDonald's. social welfare cuts the social welfare cuts that you promised to avoid will be rushed through this doll. And Labour and Fine Gael, yet again, will be seen to very brazenly target children, target carers, target mothers, and to make absolutely no apology for it. You've had your chance. You had your chance to have a change of heart. And do you know what? You'd have had the full backing of the general public had you the courage of your convictions. But I've said it to you before, and let me say it to you again, Eamon Gilmore. It's now not just a case that Labour can't, that the people can't trust Labour in government. Labour cannot trust itself in government. Thank you, Deputy. You jump to the whim of Fine Gael. So address yourself Come now on. to the carers in particular and the mothers and children of this state and explain to them why it is that your master plan for economic recovery relies on hardship for them. This government's economic plan is about restoring this country's economic sovereignty and getting us out of the economic mess. And everybody in this country understands that and everybody understands that it is difficult and that it is not uh, going to be uh, overnight. Sinn Féin, of course, have a fairy tale. Your fairy tale is that, yes, we have to do three and a half billion of a uh, budget adjustment, but that you can produce some kind of fairy tale solutions to it. You talk about homework. You talk about homework. You didn't do much, you didn't do much homework on your own proposals. You wouldn't even go and get them costed uh, from the Department of Finance. And of course, there's a reason for that. There's a reason, there's a reason, there's a reason for that. It's not just laziness. It is, in fact, just being clever, because you know very well that your proposals are an absolute fairy tale. And then you come in here and you give the impression, you give the impression that, carers, please, please. that carers and people on disability and people on invalidity uh, somehow uh, have been cut. That is not the case. The rates, the basic rates of social welfare payments for carers, for people on invalidity, for pensioners, for widows, for widowers, for people who are on job seekers benefit, for all of the payments, all of the payments, uh, all of the basic social welfare payments, none of those have been cut. They have been protected by this government 
even in the most difficult times. For people on low, for people on low incomes, this is the government that has restored the minimum wage, that has introduced legislation to restore the joint labour committees for people who are, who are on low pay, that has taken over 300,000 people out of the uh, universal social charge. But most importantly of all, this is the government that is committed to ensuring that we generate employment and that we generate economic recovery in this co country. Because the best way, the best way, the best way to tackle poverty and the best way to tackle disadvantage in our country is to maximise the number of people who are at work and to have a successful economy. And this government is determined that that is what we will do. We are going to, we are going to clear up the mess that we were left to us by our predecessors. They left us a, situ a situation where we, they had brought the IMF into the country. We're sending them home. We're sending the Troika home. We're restoring the country's economic uh, sovereignty and we're getting people back to work.